Prairie in tournament play. Prairie in a tournament 2v2. Welcome back to the Age of Empires for action, folks. We've got a banger here. The two M's. Marine Lord and M7 to the north side of this map going up against 3D Clan. Both B and Cat making an appearance here. Marine Lord, of course, is going to be on the roost. His teammate is going to be none other than M7, a rising prodigy kit, playing as the HRE in the purple. And to the south side, we've got some weird and wonderful picks coming in, actually. Something that you know we used to see a decent amount of on Prairie, it's going to be Cat on the Marlians. But Cat is a, a bit of a weird guy, folks. Keep an eye out for this, because I still remember him doing a 2TC on Marlian build recently in tournament play, so expect wildness. And then finally, B, going wild as well, we're going to see the Japanese. A Civ that doesn't really come out that much on Prairie, but then again, I feel like it's been done dirty that way, right? And that Prairie hasn't really been that prominent ever since the expansion dropped. So I'm excited to see how some established players and some come upper players are going to do on this map, considering for both, this is kind of polarizing, right? Like the players like B and Marine Lord that have played this historically will be familiar with it. But it's a very different meta we exist in in these days in 2024. Roos is pretty powerful here though, right? Uh, if I remember correctly, someone could correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure there were no wolves on Prairie. It's been a while, but I'm pretty sure wolves don't exist on this map. But there's quite a lot of small deer packs. I wonder if Roos can really... Oh, God, no, it's happening again. <laughs> Do you think Marine Lord, when he looks down and sees 80 Bunty, does he start to sweat a bit? Is there like a little bit of a panic, maybe? A realization that it might be happening again? It looks like maybe not. He should be able to find a small stack of deer on the east side here. So he can be 110 Bunty Boy. But I think everything else has almost been sniped. Oh, wow, no. East side has been completely neglected here. B, it looks like, where did he go? Did he go to the... Yeah, he went full north and he ignored the initial deer because he ran past multiple packs here. So it looks like Marino's probably going to be getting about a, like a 190 bounty game, I'd say, somewhere around there. Nice interception on the side as well. And he needs that. Okay, sorry, there were wolves. There aren't many wolves though, right? I could have sworn this map didn't have wolves. Like I said, it has been a while since we've seen Prairie. I'm looking for them now. That's the single soul wolf we've seen. But a decent game here. Marine Lord will crack the 200 mark as a result of that. Kremlin Arkin on the way. Kuros Storehouse already being built up by B. And Cat will, of course, be going eventually into that Mansa Quarry. A Cat did delay his tech timing because he done this. He actually built a second scout to contest Marine Lord. Kind of rough though, right? Like you build a second scout to contest Marine Lord and he still gets 245 bounty. It's actually going to be even more than that. The 80 Bunty boy is gone. 2024 Marine Lord is a force to be reckoned with. This guy makes it to every grand finals in S tier tournaments. Now, in fairness, one of them he was invited directly towards, but it still counts. This is a really good haul, and it starts to make me wonder if the two scout opener from Cat was even worth it. I think in 1v1s, I really like this build that Cat's doing where you go two scouts. The logic is that you do pay more food than other civs would for the scout. But remember, these scouts build notably quicker, right? They build 10 seconds quicker, 15 seconds compared to 25. That's why you pay a little bit more, right? That's the trade-off. So that build is usually quite effective because you get the scouts out so early, you deny a lot of food. But on a 2v2 map, it's an entirely different ball game. It's so much harder to execute. I think you're seeing proof of that here. As Marine Lord finishes off at the 330 bounty mark. 340 bounty mark. <laughs> why not? Why not extra freebies, baby? Not many sheep to show for it, though. Admittedly, he only has seven. Uh, let's check the sheep count. Cat is up at nine. B. Oh, my God. He has 30 sheep. B is the Sheep Whisperer. I can't believe this. M7 with 13, which is respectable considering you're playing HRE. But B, by far the majority winner with 30 Sheep on Prairie. That is wild. Reminder, folks. B only built a single scout. Right? This wasn't a two scout play. That's wild. And that's so good as well because his goal is going to be fast castle, right? This gives him all the safety to stay underneath his TC. And that means he can focus all of his attention on attacking with the Mount Samurai. I'm expecting him to go after the HRE player here. It's not a good idea to dive the Roost player because the Kremlin is strong. And also, they do have the Gremlins, right? The HRE, on the other hand, they don't really have much to protect them. Mount Samurai is very effective here. 
if M7 does anything but a spin reaction at the start of the age, his game could be over quickly. I'm wondering, is Marine not going to try to aggress in this game at all? He didn't secure the stone, right? So this is definitely an aggro focus build. I'm just wondering if he adds in a lot of knights or he rushes castle here. We are at least going to get those initial knights coming out though. Stables now being complete. Oh wow, he's going pro scouts. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. It makes sense as well, right? Because if he plays out of his base, he's going to get pinched by Japanese knights. So he has to mirror what B can do for as long as he can do it. And by going pro scouts, he gets the ability to do that. I just, I still can't believe he got 30 sheep. Absolutely wild. M7, already on the way up though. Regnant's coming. B, notably slower, but you kind of expect that, right? When you're playing against Arkin, they're always going to be a bit quick on their tech up. But yours should be more volatile because of the ability to get into the Mat Samurai. I do think that B missed macro a bit here. You can see it by the food count. He definitely could have been a bit more optimal in triggering the tech up, and then he could have switched gold more heavily so he can afford Mat Samurai. So definitely a little bit of a slip up there. It will give a bit more wiggle room over to M7 to grab the initial relics. He has a few options around him here. Only one pit mine so far from Cat, by the way. Yeah, kind of a rough one, right? With Knights coming out in the field, I don't think you get a second pit mine anytime soon. B. About ready to trigger his own tech up. Cast Lace has now been reached for M7. And notice the greed here. This is because M7 understands his timing. I just realized, by the way, we've got M7, M8. Where's M9? Save him for the 3v3s. Free Flowing gate on the way. Uh, wait, is there a world in which we get... I don't think so. I don't think you ever get Farimba here, right? Farimba fish feels really bad in 2v2s. I mean, it kind of feels bad now in 1v1s. So you will just see a gradual build into Fulani. I'm wondering if Marine Lord's going to try to punish that. It looks more likely Marine Lord is just going to trek towards Castle as well. Interesting. But he's got to play a slow comp, right? I think he's more in a support role here. I wouldn't even be surprised if he tries to get relics and takes them back to the base of M7. Love the fact he's supporting his teammate with this though. Deer drop off already. And also now that he's in the area, he can pick the deer close to M7's base and return them as well. All important because it keeps that Arkin buff going instead of you having to move out into pocket resources where A, you're exposed and B, you have a terrible gathering rate comparatively. B, take up complete. Moment of truth. It is going to be the stables. Bit of a funky position, actually. Typically, you drop the stables next to the floating gate so that you can just be optimal. I'm a little bit surprised he's done this. And oh, B, no. 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 Thank God. If it seemed like I was overreacting, I have seen games plenty where someone doesn't realize that Yorushiro wasn't dropped until they're in the mid-map and it's too late. Luckily, B notices quick enough here. First mount Samurai now out. Cap, the Warrior Scouts just camping. If he tug us down the Shinto, he might be able to get the kill. I feel like it's going to be tough with the Mount Samurai here, though. Then again, if he simply doesn't attack... Oh, wait, I'm an idiot. They're on the same team. My brain. <laughs> oh, too early in the day. It's a good guard here against the Regnets grabbing, right? Two relics are already home. I believe we've got two more on the way, or at least one more. Yeah, north side's coming in. And it is going to be Abbey Trinity. So Marine Lord is targeting the relics as well. How intriguing. Is there really enough left on the map to justify that is what I'm wondering. I guess his thought process is that the Japanese don't really rush relics, right? They don't build a Shinto shrine quickly. They just rely on the passively generated Shintos, which means they don't have many. But they will have enough, right? I, I just, I don't think the Abbey of Trinity build has any value here. What a peculiar choice. Maybe for the west side relic, but like, I'm personally, I just don't see it. I feel like Marine Lord, the problem though is like high trade house sucks as well, right? You can get better bounty tiers, but there's not much wood line. So I think that's why he had to do it. Because the alternative as well is coming out here and building a high trade house riskily for like what? Probably about 80 goldish. At least this way, I guess you do have the value of the additional text. So the increased duration, the increased damage, which can be absolutely insane. It could be handy. 
Be on the prowl though. M7. Hunkering down. There's no way he's going to try to sneak Imp, right? That feels way too greedy here. He'll have to build some more units for sure to defend against the Mount Samurai. Flash on the west side. Knights have vetted up, so there's no way that Cat can defend this. Remember, Cat, he's trying to be greedy behind this. He needs to trigger his tech up. He's got the resources. Starting to bank up now. He's got the cattle. Wait, does he have enough room there? No. Guys, that's not enough room. That's legit not enough room. Oh my god. Oh, was YouTube not pumping? Alright, I just started it. For some reason, YouTube hadn't started. Dude, that is... Uh, uh, what? What a blunder. Cat's about to realize it as well. No! No! He has to delete both of the ranches. So that's 300 wood down the drain. Oh, sorry, 200 wood down the drain. Okay, luckily he realized it fairly quickly. That could have been much worse, but that's still bad. <laughs> oh, that's insane. I mean, I always recommend to people, even if you can't rewind on Twitch, keep Twitch open because that's how we get sponsors. But good God. I mean, Cat might get a sponsor from Free the Cows. I can't believe that. That was ridiculous. Does at least make up for it quickly. He is on the way up with the tech now. In the meantime, B is dominating the mid-map. 14 mounted samurai flooding the field. Unfortunately, maybe a little bit too late to stop that relic grab coming home for Marine Lord. In the end, he manages to grab two of the remaining relics. A surprising ton of events for the French champ. Yeah, I was not expecting that. One relic seemed to be his limit, right? Somehow he crept around the back though and found one here. Just a great flood point. Difficult to do when B's just got so many Mount Samurai already. How are we looking in the base of M7? Is Temptation taking over? Is there a little Sidious voice in his head with a French accent going, Do it! Do it! Oh god, that had more of like a Napoleon sound to it. So what's the winning play for these two teams? I think M7 is going to need to find Imp. B and Cat are all in Castle. The Castle Edge is the strongest point in the game for them. Imperial is a dunk for Marine Lord and M7. Marine Lord will have access to Streltsy, which are incredible. His horsemen will be just notably better than the others. On top of that, M7, when he gets Imp, just has the Eco Flood to just not be rivaled, right? So right now, there's a pressure on Cat and B to reach Zerg point. And in fairness, they did choose the two most Zergy sieves in the game for it, right? I always call Japanese like a premium Zerg. They have the production rates to get those numbers up insanely fast. And then the Malians really are just a whole crap at the wall type sieve, right? A lot of their units are very cheap. It allows them to bulk up very quickly. And that allows them to overwhelm many a defense force. I wonder actually, does... M7 just go off to Marine Lord's base now. Because I feel like Marine Lord would not be able to hold back Mount Samurai here. Maybe the Saint's Blessing is good enough to offset the buffer of the deflective armor. I just don't think it's good enough to offset the Bannerman though. It feels like going off to M7's base is the hard way of doing this right now. Because he's walling himself in and he has a static army that's very strong if it gets anchored down. Whereas Marine Lord is relying on mobility. I can't help but wonder, did B wait too long here? He marches in, but Marine Lord is now making his own move out into the map. Dive comes through, Marine Lord. What's he going to do? He's actually going to head back home. We'll just seek shelter here. He needs to sneak out the back of the base. Nice in the choke point to try and hold. Defenses are not going to be enough to really deter the Mount Samurai, but he does at least have the bulk force coming home. And this would make B hesitate. He's going to back away. Meanwhile, check this. M7 smells an opportunity. He says, okay, if the Mount Samurai are on the west side of the field, I can move in before they come in to punish me. What a read. I would not have expected this. M7 was playing full turtle mode, but now he's more of a snapping turtle. Looks onto the economy. B has got a group of Samurai to defend. That's not ideal when you're up against the crossbows like this. And no Odachi either. So Spearman will last a long time. 
He's going to start a step back. Mount Samurai start to reveal themselves. M7. He's going to have to commit to the fight. There's no running away from this. Not with Mount Samurai there. Spearmen do get a good fight. And now the Heavy Maces boys are here. Men at arms to follow up. These Samurai are way too weak for B. A Dachi Tech only just got queued up. Meanwhile, the Mount Samurai are distracted as Marine Law continues the assault. They're tearing him apart right now. Crossbow Mass still looking healthy. Spearmen have been mopped up. Odachi Tech is about to complete. This is where things could get a little bit dicey for M7. However, B is being spread thin. Like a thin knob of butter across an entire low fee. He just hasn't got enough to go around. Mount and Samurai need to get home and they need to repel this assault before it gets more problematic because apparently they're learning witchcraft. We all saw that Spearman. That's not how Spearman are meant to work. Like Militia were summoned. Marine Lord though... He has a pretty sizable force after all that, right? That side investment by B into the Samurai to defend really cost him dearly. Gave Marine Lord the cavalry edge. One that he continues to extend 16 to 25 in total now. These warrior monks are no pushover. Boy's Fortitude is also in. So Boy's Fortitude is really cool, guys, because with Boy's Fortitude, you offset over half of the value of deflective armor, right? Because you have 25 more health. And the Lance is worth like 30-ish, uh, 30, mid-30s, high-30s usually, right? Naganar is actually weirdly high. I don't know why Naganar... Oh, it's the, yeah, the Bannerman buff. I was about to say, that feels way too high. But it should be enough with the numbers for Marine Lord to get a favorable fight here. Javelins are a problem if they existed. It's only Archer's Spearman coming out right now from Cat. Yeah, I've got some scouts being added in, but I don't know if he went pro scouts. I can't imagine why else you'd want five scouts. He just wants five scouts. Hey, when a cat learns to use a keyboard and mouse, you don't question what the cat wants, okay? That's how you end up in a cage in 50 years as a human being. Ah, that's why cat wants them. They're role playing as trees, so. Playing trees to go around. They have a standoff here. Green Lord really just wants to find a way into the backline eco here. Japan's starting to spread out a little, right? So if you can seep through, it's a big deal. In fact, even his starting vein is starting to dry up here. 1,600 left over. I wonder, could Marine Lord just peel five knights and go west? Ah, oh, as soon as I see that, <laughs> it's already happening. Unfortunately, he does run into Musavadi. Actually think in a way they need to kind of weave into the back of Orange's base here. B's the bigger threat, I feel. Like Cav at this stage is kind of the X factor, right? Because if one side looks a little bit weaker, you can peel off Cav and go hunting Eco. Speaking of which, the Cav do clash. They come in here. Saints Blessing gets activated. And Arms trying to follow us up. Start a step retreat. Crossbow's just out of range. But now the Samurai baited in. B's had enough. He has to hang to the fight. But the Samurai in the retreat taking a lot of damage here. Recommitment. Spread of the lines. Archers doing decent damage to the Toxin Arrows, but the crossbow's evening that out. The question mark is, can this front line of M7s hold long enough here? The flood from the right side from Marine Lord does start to hit the eco, but it might come at a cost. The front line is broken. He needs to get out. Second wave coming in. M7 trying to retreat away from this. And after all is said and done, an overwhelming advantage now for B and Cat. 125 to 75. They did not respect the power of the poisoned arrows. And they paid the price now. In the retreat, crossbow mass likely to be carved down here. Gates aren't being set up by M7, so no easy quick retreat out. Looks like the Knights will cover him well enough here. Well played by Marine Lord to get his teammate back to safety, but they have a problem now. The numbers are swelling against them. The eco lead is non-existent for them, right? I mean, they do admittedly have Regnant's power behind them, they have got the Arkham, but a lot of this gets offset by things like the Yoroshiros and, of course, the Fulani effect. Hell on the trade might be a bit better. They need to be careful. The problem here is, like, when you don't have a front line, the crossbows just melt straight away, right? So they have to forfeit the situation. Sacred sites aren't really capturable from here, right? I think there's just way too much spread to get all free. So that's at least the upside. M7 and Marine Lord are not going to die from that move. They definitely set themselves back pretty hard. Kind of proof that these fights are not as desirable to take as they would have liked. Hmm. 
they maybe eco boom from here? I mean, B's got the stone, right? Going for Shogunate from here just feels really greedy. It might be more valuable for him to go for like a second TC, but there is limited wood. We already have a second TC from Cat though. Did he mansa this? He might have mansed this. He sometimes likes to do this. He hasn't set up the stone outcropping, right? Yeah, so I think he mansed his way to a second town center, which is really cool. B, a little bit ambitious with the split off here. Good choices by Marine Lord as well. Looks like the Wooden Fortress won't be enough to protect everyone here, but he did at least prep these defenses. I'm wondering, does M7 just try to creep into Imp? Military isn't insane is the problem. I, I always find that this is the worry when you go up against Malians and Japanese. Because that Zerg factor we talked about, right? It always forces you to reinvest military, military, military. Even if you want to be greedy on a Civ like HRE. How's Cat's Eco looking right now? Dude, he's bulk out. So Cat wants either a fire or attack, right? And he'll take whichever he can get. If you won't fight him, he will inherently get towards Imperial Age. His food and gold income just guarantees that. A lot of wood being gathered currently, though. It's like he's setting up farms for the long term. Count the march forward. B's army, definitely in more of a recovery state here. Only 46 in total, but 40 of that are samurai. It's kind of interesting, actually. Their only answer to knights right now is Musafadi. Not the most ideal. But the Toxin Arrows do help a lot as well. And a dive now in towards the farmlands. M7 needs to mount the defense. 20 lands net have been scaled into. Could he hold this? Could he do this? He's going to have to gap close quickly. The Musafadi might be baited in the fight. This might be exactly what he needs. Nice cleaves through. The hunt is on, though. Archer starts to step back from Cat, just trying to snipe down whatever he can. Landsnake count still at 15, though. And a nice, calming retreat by M7. He says, okay, good damage done. Do not throw away the threat. That's up towards the farms. Meantime, Knights raiding in. Marine Lord finally find those flank raids he's been looking for this whole time. M7 still under pressure, though. Landsnake to count only at 17. Archers start stepping back. Musafadi reveal again. Big mistake, though. Heavy losses. Musafadi count down to 34 in the front line. Lancenet moving in, cleaving to the Samurai as well. This is a dangerous dance between the two sides. Just one misstep is all it takes for one side to take the dub. If the Lancenet overstep, they die. If the Musafadi Samurai engage too quickly, they die. And all the while, these little flank raids from Marine Lord are drawing attention. Trying to force that slip up. That's necked in. Frontline standing at ground. Big mistake though. Knights now diving in as well. And they might have overcommitted slightly here. Good reset. Archer's able to hold, but Mangoes are now here. So that should signal a retreat. B and Cat cannot hang around any longer. Damn, that was scary. M7, well played there though. He threaded the needle really nicely, holding Lance Neck long enough to get the Mango. Forcing a full commitment now though. Lions are thinning a little bit, and M7 needs to start attacking ASAP. Wrap around the back, crossbow, should be able to defend against the Musafadi. A nice body blocker coming in. Line formation actually shuffles him down the way. And it looks like it's going to be clean up. Cat and B, that overwhelming military lead doesn't really exist the way it once did. Mango will survive this. Knights have been roaming around doing some eco damage. M7 and Marine Lord now substantially ahead. 152 to 127 eco. Courtesy of the double TC versus the double TC. Wow. What a turnaround there. Still at military disadvantage, right? But Marine Lord and M7, there's a quality difference between these two sides. Their units are better. Musafadi Flood is cheap. It's effective in that regards. Archers as well, right? But things like Mangos getting added in, more Knights here. It's kind of a deal breaker. And question of why Landsnecht and no MAA? There were MAA. But the Landsnecht are there to clear out the Musafadi. Because if you build Men at Arms into Musafadi, Musafadi will destroy you. Right? You just can't rely on Musafadi versus Men at Arms on its own. You need to switch it up. Dive towards Marine Lord's economy now. So they're switching up too. 
Not a bad situation for M7 though, right? The only downside is he can't bring the siege, but he can bring the army quickly with marching drills. So now the pressure should be on Marine Lord to prep his own siege, which is usually ideal for the Roos in a 1v1. But in a team game, he only wants to be on Cav. This could prove to be a weakness. Ferdy seen that by Cav. <laughs> this guy has the weirdest Malian builds. Not the first time I've seen him do triple TC as Malians. Probably won't be the last. Hase will break here. He dive to the west side. M7's army is still about 30 seconds out. And Knights can't defend this on their own. Marine Lord may have been a little bit too delayed getting into Mangos here as well. Q's up too. Has to hold for 40 seconds. Arch is now diving in though. They see the Siege Workshops. And I think they want to stick on top of it here. M7. 10 seconds out. Knights dodging the fight. Siege Workshops are going to be tackled though. One brought down. He needs to retreat though. The reinforcements have now arrived. Here we go. M7. In to mount the defense. Knights do commit to the fight. Backstab comes in from the militia to slow down the retreat. They may not be killing a lot, but what they're doing is they're body blocking the retreat. And Mangos are now coming out. So another reason that Cat and B need to get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, kind of an overextension there. Cat and B, I mean, you know, the, the reality of what should be happening here is you want to be splitting the map, right? Going into multiple locations like what B is doing now. Had they been doing this when that dive happened, substantial damage could have been done to M7's base. But now a handful of samurai like this can easily be repelled by the men at arms. And what's the outcome on the west side? You still lost the fight. Overwhelmingly, right? The military lead that they once had on the side of 3D Clan is now gone. They're actually behind in raw military. MMA defense will be solid enough here. So a waste of more troops for B. The only upside right now is the M7 and Marine Lord are not attacking. The downside is they might be attacking soon. Think about the state of the game, right? Like M7's got a little bit of way to go until his pops. But he's got plenty of gold income. His food income should be swelling up further. In fact, I think maybe M7 forgot about a tech or two. Does he even have a mill? Oh, M7, please. Don't be that guy. Okay, he does. Yeah, he did get double eco tech. Yeah, so something's gone a little bit wrong here. He should definitely have more than what he currently has. I think he can delete the mining camp here. Probably the house as well. Get a few more farms around this area. Because he should be buffed up further. Right, he should be like closer to 2k food at least. Keep drop coming in from counter defense though. Oh, they need to be careful. The mangoes, they target this out. Villagers could be going down. Gets it up just in time though. Only one mango was targeted onto the eco line. Dive continues. Looking for anything they can find. They might actually go for the ranches soon. Mangoes continue to hold those archers hostage. This is getting ugly though. Ka having to defend like this, there's always a risk, right? If you have to back up too much, the farms become the target. The cow become the liability. M7. Plus Marine Lord should be losing the mango soon. For the time being, still finding some good wallops though. Archer mass is shrinking. Has this been an overextension? It's starting to feel like it a bit. I think this is a bit ambitious. When the keep went up, M7 and Marine Lord refused to go home. But they get something behind this. Although they may lose the front force, M7 is now heading into Imperial Age. Late game is upon us. The HRE economy is about to swell. Currently at 80, give it a few minutes, it'll be up at 140. Ooh. Rough position as well, right? Like, Cam B lost a lot even just defending that. They're not in a position to immediately counterattack. Even if they were, the really cool thing that M7 and Marine had done is they attacked south side. By attacking south side, they forced all the army down here, opposite side of the map to M7. So your only option now is to attack Marine Lord because to dive over to the east side again takes way too long here. By the time you'd arrive, elite techs would be complete. And probably cannons as well, actually. So instead, they changed the narrative. Being Cat, now looking at the sacred sites. Mm, a solid strategy here, right? If you can get some keep drops. Obviously, Japan can't help you with that unless B techs up. So it's kind of all on Cat. Cat had been using the Mansa a lot into stone, uh, but it looks like he's been shifting back over to active stone gathering. Landsman in arms. Starting to creep around the back here. Oh, that is so cheeky. M7. He's drawing attention so Marine Lord doesn't get dove. So he pokes like this, and now they have to arc to the east side. And look at the reaction. 
Dude, the bait and switch here between Marine Lord and M7 is so on point. M7 now draws aggro. Marine Lord goes to Imperial Age. Keep drop is going to fail, though, for M7. A little bit overzealous on his timing here, but he had to do something. Knights are on the way to assist. Men at Arms Lance continue to back up. Elite upgrades are in. He's got the double upgrades coming through soon. So we've got Men at Arms upgraded, Lance deck on the way. Fortifications are coming in. No cannon placements to speak of. Only Springles, but they should be good enough. Knights now arriving at the perfect time as well. The front line is already dead. They'll start to wrap around the back towards the siege. Mango is looking unguarded here. Archers will try to protect it, but will not be quick enough. Mango hit does at least come out. But now they're in trouble. B, Cat, can they push this back? Mango to defend the flank. Only one left alive. Second wave comes in. The Moose to try and swarm this. Tech up is now complete. Upgrades are not going to be there in time for Marine Lord before this fight is complete. And it's looking like the conclusion is going to be a push through. B and Cat. The second wave, enough to break some teeth. M7. He needs more troops. 2,000 food is not going to work here. He also has the mangoes way too late. Nothing to defend them anymore. This is a difficult defense. With cannon emplacements more feasible, but that never came through. Green Lord has to hold back. Horseman numbers are swelling up. Elite stats should be coming through soon. Halfway complete. Mango's poking. Springles are going to be able to punish that, though. However... Horseman versus Mustafadi Archer isn't a bad idea here. The Samurai is still a problem, but the majority of the army is at least adjustable for Horseman. He repairs is at least slowing down the siege in. M7 at risk. If he loses control of the Arkin, he won't have the food to reboom. The game will essentially be over. Palace of Swabia has helped a lot getting up to 105 eco, but compare it to Cat, compare it to B, right? B79, not too bad. And then look at Cat, 100 already. Courtesy of the free TC build. Fort Huntress also now on the way. They are targeting that sacred site win condition. Horsemen riding in. Are going to start to spread out. Men at Arms are now swelling up again. A few lands decked in the mixer as well. Colvin will start sniping out the siege. Men at Arms need to be careful not to clump too much or mango shots will come in big. Springles are being exposed as well. This is starting to work. Horsemen Men at Arms breaking through. Can be. I think this Fort the Huntress may be overly ambitious. They're forfeiting ground very quickly here. Cat will at least get the landmark up, but I'm not sure it's going to last long here. Numbers looking good. A stabilization after a shaky ground here for M7 and Marine Lord. Now the quality can start to seep through. Cat is teching up, but B, now still a liability being an age behind. I'm also worried now. What do you do if you're cat? Like, is the plan now to switch into gunners? Because if you switch gunners, gunners will lose to Strauzzi, right? Like, I think that comes in a lot cleaner. Instead, this is wild. Look at what Marine Lord is doing. We very rarely see it in 1v1s, but in team games, it can make a lot of sense. There's plenty of gold on the map to enable knights with pole axes. The plus four damage, the 25 extra health. These guys are insanely tanky and hit insanely hard. Wow, I would not have anticipated that move from Marine Lord. That is a really cool one to see, though. So we can see the damage on these knights now, right? 44 on the Lance, 34 on the Poleaxe. Quite the punch they kick. And Marine Lord, the classic thing you do in the late game, right? He's just trying to split the map. No stone walls, right? These are just Palisades, so not good enough to defend. In fact, no, cat. Oh, no! The timing! Horseman with the breakthrough just before the stone walls go up. And he's everywhere, right? Marine Lord, he's trying to draw them back home to defend. Immediately goes after the counter ranches. Starts to torch those down. Reaction is very slow from Cat. Only veteran Gonzos as well, so not someone that's immediately going to kill off these horsemen that are so tanky. Textile on the villagers will at least make it harder to take them down, but there is going to be some eco damage done here on both ends. And no dive coming the other way. B, a little bit too distracted to continue his move. And Cat, a little bit too hesitant to go for his dive as well. Damn, I actually think Marine Lord's damage here might just reset the game long enough for M7 and Marine Lord to get full tech unlocks in Imp. Then B becomes the biggest liability imaginable. I swear I'm not just trying to do these puns. It's just every word has B in it.
And you see how effective these horsemen are, though, right? Knights as well. I mean, it's insane, right? These samurai can never contest. B really needs to consider adding in spearmen at this stage. His spearmen are better than the Donzos, remember, with Nagayari. But uh, I just don't see it coming. I've got a bad feeling he's going to stick to the, the Sam, right? Like, until he gets into Imp, he can't go Spear anyway. And Imperial Age just doesn't seem feasible here. B is still losing more economy. Oh, no. Mistakes made. Down to 69. A nice number in the right situation. But this is not that situation. A keep drop again. Delayed for M7, but he will reinvest. He should be able to get this up. Really just to stack it up. Colvin's moving forward as well. This is not a fight that Cat can win. And B definitely can't push it in. In fact, B has to leave. Only one siege weapon stays alive. Castle will go up. Sacred Sight has been decapped. And I'm starting to think that this game is slipping away from B and Cat. A very strong mid-game timing, but we did warn about this. We crystal balled it, right? B and Cat, it's all about ending the game in Castle. If this goes into Imperial Age, HRE and Rus are always going to be favored here. Japanese can't really win that matchup easily. Marlins are all about that flood point. And yet, Cat finally enables him. B has the resources for a tech up. Is it going to be too late, though? It's looking a bit rough, right? Like, you know, even if he gets the tech up, his economy is in shambles. Tanagash a Gunsmith is on the way. We even now have traders added in. It looks like we've got a switch up. Marine Lord, 16 traders in the field already. <laughs> so that is how he's going to afford the knights, folks. And this is going to be a full focus build on knights. 22 in the field, 11 more queued up already. This kind of feels better than playing French in the late game, in a way. So especially if you keep adding in Warrior Monks, I think. That's when it makes it slightly better. Because Polax is equals out to similar to what you get from the charge bonus, but it's permanent, right? And Boy's Fortitude makes you very tanky. Kind of on par with Royal Bloodlines. Breakthrough. Marine runs all the way around and says, wait, the fight is over there? Give me a sec. Hold my beer. Oh, this is depressing to watch from the Samurai. They just aren't contesting this. Gunners are now being built into by Cat. Problem is, you're against horsemen and very tanky knights. You need a lot of gunners. You need them fast. You also need B to hold a stable count of Samurai as a front line. It's a big ass here. It's like the Donzo raid is going to get mopped up. There. A little bit of eco damage done here. Nothing too substantial. Horseman Knights. Flashman of the Samurai is kind of bad here, right? Like, realistically, you want to let the men at arms handle that and then send the horsemen onto the archers. The ground is being given over, though. I mean, here's the funny thing, right? Like, you've got Mustafadi gunners on one side, but you've kind of just got big boy gunners on the other. The Culverins are not just anti-siege, they also turn into 50 cal snipers to take out the enemy ranged. That's rough. I feel like if Cat and B were on equal economy, there is a way. But how you're on equal economy, right? Like even if you're on equal village account, things like the Arkin really matter a lot. Things like the Bounty Gavin Ray also matter a lot. Calming moment might give an opportunity here, though. Zutsu are being built into by B. Oda Tactics has finally been queued up. He has yet to find the gold to get his elite tech, though. He's struggling on gold access in this game. You saw him taking gold away from Cat's side because Cat has permanence on getting gold. We talked about this being a big deal in the late game. Japan is not a sieve that thrives without gold access. They fizzle and die. Folks, there is really not much gold left here. In fact, B right now is gathering stone to get gold. It's his only option left. Ka is the only one setting up trade. Yeah, I think the resource constraints have kind of hurt B too much here now. The relic situation was already kind of condemnation number one, right? Allowing these many relics to go to the north side team is not a good sign for Japan. And while the Marlins might be able to get away with no gold access to veins, bar the dead ones that they've got pit mines on, Japan doesn't play that same game. Six so have at least been locked in again, but another problem is 
you, know, you need B gathering these, not not cap. So that kind of limits who and when you can go for these, right? Looks like he has at least been the one to grab them. So a little bit more gold trickle coming. Uh, we should also have Bunre soon, right? Let's have a look. Yeah, he got Bunre. So he does have the additional Yorushiro drops to put in forges. In fact, at this stage, every single Yorushiro should be in a forge. It's the only way you can play this game. have got the Fable Streltsy switch. Uh, this doesn't feel like a winnable battle anymore for Cat, man. Remember, when you get bogged down in fights like this, it's better for Streltsy than it is for Musavadi Gunners. Musavadi Gunners have that ambush attack, but that's kind of it, right? That's the only advantage you can get. And that's if you need to fall the Huntress, which no one's going to be near anytime soon again. Yeah, so first strike, not a factor. It just means you just have worse Gunners that cost more to produce than Streltsy. I still feel like Streltsy are just too good for what they are, really. 1990, and they are better gunners than almost every gunner in the game. With the exception of what? China? And English with outposts. Damn. And while B has to come defend on the west side, look who breaks from the east. M7 now moving in the economy. And you might start to scout out the trade happening here because the pathing has not been kind to Cat. More gaining more ground as well. Rams are arriving to deal with the wall. Cat, I think even Cat just doesn't have the gold anymore, right? Like he's switching trade to try and get enough to gun up. You're seeing B go this as well. Like it, it feels like they were too late. If they'd done this around the same time Marine Lord did, very different games. But M Lord now 25 traders deep. You've got Regnant's gold to keep the meta arm spam going for your H3 player. I think their timings are just off here on the south side team. Then the arms already starting to leak around the back. He knows. Of course they know. And Village is now on the way for the keep drop to shut it down permanently. And they're spread way too thin because look what's happening. Marine Lord says, okay, you can either block his keep drop on the east or you can block my assault on the west, but you cannot do both. Horseman now marching in again for the Fulani. The Fulani that never got fully filled again. I'm going to stick to that statement. Oh, yes, the cows. No one ever, ever even came to eat the Kobe beef. It's just been lying there. Got a few flies in it right now. I guess he doesn't like beef. Keep has at least been cancelled on the east side. But they are losing ground fast. Village on the front line. B just needs to gather something but can't anymore. And this, this looks over. I think this is just out of control now. Marine Lord's army just simply getting too big to contest. 11 Streltsy just being ignored in these fights. Possibly the worst way to try and engage it. So we have got Freeman leadership coming through for B. So maybe a way to get troops across quick enough to start to stem the bleeding. But the bleeding's already done, guys. The blood has just been absorbed into the ground at this point. There is no Fulani effect anymore. Cat's eco has started to plummet. He's down to 1,200 food. What a game from the M boys. M7 and M Lord. Able to beat down the 3D clan. They're starting to reach the trade now. I mean, B, he does have a lot of samurai, but this is a classic issue when you play big maps like this, right? When the walls go up, you feel safe. But the moment the walls start to get gaps in them, having non-cav components feels bad. Right, like I wonder if there's a way in which they could have played more sofas out of Cat, but I don't think so because Cat had to build the range unit, right? Like, B is not going to build a range unit here. His tech up was way too late to get into hand cannoneers. In theory, he should have been going hand cannoneers, but he never had the gold for it. I think this is just strategically really well played by M7 and Marine Lord to starve the gold source on the map. I do also, by the way, think they had really good sim for it. The HRE timing was really good into the relic gathering. And then obviously with Marine Lord, you know, you always have hunted cabins to fluff you up on the gold a little bit. And his trade transition was mwah, on point. I think that timing is really what saved their game. Otherwise, you would never see Marine Lord being able to afford 20 Streltsy with another 20 in Q. I don't think I'm going to hit the fast forward though. This is completely unraveled now. I think the boys are just processing the loss. 
realistically, there should not be a way back from this. B has got all these samurai. They're just never anywhere in time. The eco just keeps shrinking too fast. And you see what happens, right? Like, just a little bit of assessment here. The moment he sees samurai react on the backside, goes in on the front. Goes in on the front. Every single time. And the worst part still is, like, you're spending, what? Let's say 10 samurai to chase five horsemen that you only ever catch if they want to be caught. I think we're about to see the trade completely blocked for good. Keep drops from M7 and allowed him to start crawling in here. Marie Lord has basically carved an entire route down the center of Cat's base. Strolzy admittedly frontlining may be the dentist thing he could have done today. <laughs> he just realized the mistake he made there. Yeah, remember, these are infantry, so a Dutchy tech does bonus damage against them. You do not want to be near them. Still, with that detail in mind, right, how many samurai are we talking here? Probably 50. Okay, 31 samurai in total. And it's 65. And there's mass men at arms on the east side of Culverance. I mean, Jesus. When you're getting sieged down by Culverance on your landmarks, you know you got a problem. It's tough as well. Like, I know what people are wondering is like, what is the comeback for being cat in these type of situations? The the comeback would have been raiding themselves, but once again, it comes back to that lack of cavalry detail, right? Like, no player fully committed hard to cav. Cat added in a few, but never mass. So he's not here raiding. He's not here raiding. And because they're not there raiding, they're running around like headless chickens. Even Sofa's just a body block against horsemen would have been phenomenal here. I genuinely think Cat and B got too scared about the idea of mass ranged. I think instead they should have been focusing on the idea that the Cav could have raided and then mirrored the Horseman. That's a more winning approach. Saying I can't... You know, that saying if I go for this, we don't have a ranged army for the main fight doesn't matter. Because then the pressure is on Marine Lord and M7 to force that main fight. Instead, you kind of just gave them agency on the wings. And from there, the result is clear. God, the Culverins. Three Bombards, four Culverins. These are actually super effective snipers. The Bombard's damage doesn't get deflected. The Culverins do. But usually the deflective armor is down quick enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll hit the speed up now. I think they're just processing the loss at this stage. Marine Lord has gotten way too deep this time. There's just not enough of Cat's army left. For a long time, credit to being Cat, they were keeping the military lead. Those days are now gone. Look at the difference. 150 plus compared to half that count. This game is over. Marine Lord just sent M7 3,000 gold. That is how stacked Marine Lord is right now. Guy has been booming off that trade. 36 traders on the back line. What a pleasure though, man. You know, this makes me wish we got more Prairie. I don't know about it for 1v1s. I know people have mixed experiences there. But for team games, what a thrill.